Alright guys, today we got a 05 F-150 that has a growling, binding, scraping noise in the front end. And uh, I got up on the hoist here, I did a few checks. Here's one of the easiest checks you can do with this kind of concern. It doesn't do it when it's off the ground, you can see it's unloaded. But as soon as you put weight on it, the wheel's going to kick out. And I'll show you what, what it's doing, and that's why it's touching the backing plate and uh, actually scraping, grinding, binding. Put your hands at the 6 and uh, 12 o'clock position. Alright, so the first thing we got to do, obviously, is pull the wheel off. And they're 13 16 Get that out of the way. And then we're going to start pulling off the brake caliper and uh, bracket together. And we're going to hang to the side so we have free access to the hub and bearing. Alright, so the first thing you got to do to change this out is obviously get the caliper and the bracket together out of the way and the rotor off of here. And it's a good idea to compress it in, it makes it easier to get off. It also gets stuck on this rust ridge right here. So we'll compress it in just a little bit. Like so. That's enough. And then. All these vacuum lines for your 4x4 and your ABS wire, we're going to unclip those from the caliper so they don't strain on them. Yank it on it. Get it nice and free. And then we're going to pull two 18 millimeter bolts on the back side that hold the bracket itself on. And we're going to hook it and we're going to hang it so it doesn't ruin the actual uh, hose on here. kind of heavy. It's going to come right off. This one's got one heck of a rust ridge. You can see the fight with it even being compressed. You can imagine the rust ridge and fighting it without compressing that caliper. So it's very important to do that. Just hook on. Turn it out of the way. Okay, and then your rotor may or may not fall off. If it doesn't fall off, what you got to do is beat the face of it here to break that rust bond with a sludge. You're going to have to hit it pretty hard, but it will separate because the face of the actual hub here is so big, there's so much area for the rust to adhere to. All right, next we're going to pull the shield off of here so we can hit the uh, hub and bearing assembly here off from both sides with our hammer. These are 8mm bolts. And then right here in the center is a little dust cap. We're going to pull that off with a uh, flat head screwdriver or a cat claw like this. You may have to get in there pretty hard with a hammer and start popping it out. This one's already loose, so it's already in here. And they mangled it pretty bad, but it's only really, really keeping water and, and dirt out of there. Maybe I'll straighten it a little bit so you can see that. That's a 13 millimeter nut. That'll be free. This just kind of sits in here. There's no actual like uh, it's not like pressed into the actual hub. Uh, it's only 20 foot-pound torque on it, so it just kind of uh, secures the shaft to the hub and bearing. At this point, the, the actual ABS wire right here, follow it all the way up and start popping off the retainers like it up here, and uh, getting rid of that because our new hub and bearing comes with a new. ABS sensor and wire. Connect this right here. And now, all we got to do on the back side of this, I'll show you here in a second, there's four 18 millimeter bolts that bolt at each, each corner here. And after that, it'll be free to start beating it off of there. On the back side here, you can see the one, 
two, uh, and three and four on the other side, uh, 18 millimeter bolts. And they're pretty easy to get to, but I like to um, take off the actual outer tie rod on here, get it out of here, and get it out of the way so when I swing it to the side, I can get to these with my impact. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to pull off this outer tie rod end just to get it out of the way. Not totally necessary. And it'll slide out and get out of your way then. Then you can go back and forth with your impact. You have full range of motion on here and uh, zip these right out of here. Now if yours is really rusty, right here where it actually protrudes through, uh, right here and where it mates with the actual knuckle, it's a good idea to soak that area with uh, rust penetrant. I'm going to try to do without it, we'll see how it turns out. Not too bad. These ones, as far as the threads, do not stick through that far, unlike the Explorers where there's a three to four threads sticking through that can get all gummed up with rust and all that and cause problems coming back out. So you can see these are coming out pretty easy. And here we go on the other side. Not only had the full range of motion like that, I was able to get my impact in here if you have it and uh, get it off pretty fast. It helps a lot. Now, at this point, you're going to have to beat it off of there. Mine's actually loose, it looks like, uh, which is not good for video. But what you got to do, and I have an example of this how you beat them off of here on my Explore uh, Hub and Bearing video, you basically just take turns side to side and uh, start tapping them off. And it's going to take some good uh, swings of the hammer with a three pound sledge to really get them moving. Now this one's loose. So it's coming off pretty easy. At this point you just need to watch it. It's going to fall out on you. Now at this point, here's our IWE in here and then our actual half shaft with the meshing gears. We'll kind of see how it works a little bit better. We're going to want to clean all this old grease out of here and dirt. We'll put some fresh wheel bearing high temperature type grease in there. So that'll work properly. And of course on our new one, the gears that are on our new hub and bearing are not greased, so we're going to want to grease those and uh, make sure it all works smoothly when we're done here. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is tuck a rag in here, so there's going to be some grease left in there, and uh, you don't want dirt particles and rust getting in there. And just grind in, so we're going to pack it like that. And then we're going to clean up the face of it here so your new hub and bearing sits nice and flush. This one's not too bad, but I'm going to clean it anyways. And here's the actual gear teeth on the uh, new hub and bearing. Like I said, there's no grease on it. So 
we're going to put a light coat on there. We're going to do the majority of the grease inside of here. Something like that. And then the actual, there's needle bearings in here where the half shaft rides. You're going to want to coat them inside there too. There we go, something like that. And then we'll do the inside of the actual uh, actuator right here. Right in here, where all these teeth mesh up in here. Now on the bolts, you're supposed to change the bolts out according to Ford, but their other option is to actually put blue Loctite on them. And that seems more reasonable, so we're going to be doing that. All cleaned up, all greased up. Just make sure your actual ABS sensor is on this side right here, just see it'll fit into the uh, knuckle. Start threading your bolts by hand at all four corners. And that'll help line it up and uh, no cross threads. Cross threads are no fun. Lock tight on this one too. And at this point we're going to snug it down so it seats evenly from corner to corner and then we'll torque it down for that. Said, make sure your ABS sensor right here is actually locked into the knuckle and located. And now is a good time to make sure you put this uh, nut on here. It's 20 foot pounds for the torque spec on it. Just make sure your actual half shaft right here is splined with the hub and bearing. So it's turned a couple times, you'll know, it'll spin. And then make sure that it's fully seated in here and we have no damage to our IWEs in here. So we'll snug this down. And torque that down afterwards also. But let's get to these uh, actual bolts that hold the hub and bearing at first. Alright, so the torque spec on these big bolts that hold the hub and bearing in are 150 foot-pounds. And same thing, cross-torque them. Let's torque this axle nut down, 20 foot pounds, like I said. Should be able to just hold that. Yep. Alright, got it all bent back in place so it actually seal up this area. And you can see it fits on there nice and tight now. Alright, so put your nut back on your outer tie rod in here and make sure you use blue Loctite so it doesn't vibrate off. down and all the torque specs will be down the description down below uh, for your reference at this point we put our rotor back on just make sure there's not a bunch of debris uh, inside of here where it actually mates up on there make sure you break it off or shake it off just go right back on over like that and a lot of guys do this just so they're not fighting it it's not flopping like that so let's throw the lug nuts back on here and uh, snug it down all right let's get 
getting our caliper back on. Same thing, lock tight on your actual bolts. We're going to have to fight it past the rust ridge again on here. It's not fun. Line your bolts up. Now these ones for the caliper, they're they're blind like this. You can't really see them. You definitely got to get in there uh, and tighten them by hand. Make sure we're not cross threading. So once again. Make sure you clip your um, vacuum lines back in and all that. And uh, you the S wiring. Connect it all back up. And those two bolts that hold the uh, caliper bracket in are also 150 foot pounds. And one last thing we got to do is actually spin the rotor on here and make sure that there's no weird noises or binding or grabbing or scraping. And then just do one last look over, make sure all your connections are uh, secured all the way up, don't want them rubbing through. And then uh, make sure all your bolts are torqued down, everything back together you might have touched. After that, you just pop the wheel back on, 150 foot pounds on the wheel, uh, lug nuts also. That's it, guys. One last thing I want to mention is make sure you pump your brakes up. Even though we didn't do a brake job, uh, we did compress the caliper back in a little bit. And uh, just that little bit can make it feel um, like the brakes are going to the floor. So make sure you pump up a little bit before you take it out of park.